We are now. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> this is John with Law Talk and Mike. <laughs> oh, this is cool. No, it's going to be great. Um, we have the video that was given to me by Law and Crime and by their subcontractors. So we're going to go through a little bit of that. And we're just going to react to it and see how, you know, see what happens. And I'm going to stop between each of them so we can respond to the chat. You guys can ask questions and everything can be, hopefully it's going to be cool. and It's going to be pretty straightforward. So let me get to that. I am, by the way, I am new to this. I am awful at it. So I'm going to do the best that I can. <laughs> That's not the right one. That is the right one. Process of elimination. It's all good. Um, so, excuse me. Uh, let me change this because that's the sun. And I don't want him or, yeah, or the first daughter speaking. I don't think it's appropriate. So, let's see if I can find... All right, maybe about there. I was 14, but you ultimately betrayed me. The man I thought could do no wrong and that I looked up to had broken something that will never be Can you, you can pause it for a second? Here I am today, still dealing with sure. the consequences of your actions. We got a little lay a little foundation. We don't we don't know who's here. This is the the Summers v. Uh, Florida v. Summers case, and and we're at the sentencing. This is uh, uh, Trevor Summers's kids and his ex wife giving victim impact statements at the sentencing. Sorry. Yeah, absolutely. So so for those who did not see uh, Monday's commentary, yes, it is entirely a i was fortunate enough to be allowed to get the raw feed and this is the so the ones that i skipped through the first two they're minors i don't think that it's personally appropriate to have their material although it was public so I'm jumping to Arden. Um, I'm gonna maybe backtrack to the mother, but these, so Arden at this point is 20 years old. She was 14 years old when all of this went down. She was the one that allegedly opened the window for the father to climb in. It's, it's not great, but that's, that is the background. Five and a half years, I have struggled with what happened to my family, especially for the part I took in it. On the, mark, on the night of March 11, 2017, I let you into my mom's house through a bedroom window. I will forever live with the guilt of what you did, even though I know that I could not have known what was going to happen. I trusted you in what you said. You told me you needed to speak to her and that it wouldn't be long. But little did I know, I would be assisting in putting my mom through hours, even days, of hell. And anger towards myself had built up inside. How could I not see how strange it was to let you in the window? Why didn't I question it? Even during that time when I waited down the street in your, down the street in your car, I thought it was odd how long it took you to wake my mom up. I have the burning question of why couldn't I do more? But now I realize the answer to that question because I was a child, a child who trusted her parents and a child who trusted her father. The guilt has affected me for five years eating away at my soul. Therapy and medication was not enough to tame the burning flame inside me. I was led to destructive behaviors, none of which I am proud of. The physical pain I inflicted upon myself was nothing compared to the pain of the guilt I felt and the weight I carried on my young shoulders. While no one else blamed me for what I did, for what happened, I did. I fought against my own demons for over five years, all because of the actions of one man. I am 20 now, and while I have grown and overcome most of my demons, I still crave the closure I've been waiting for. The closure that 14-year-old needs. Wow. Oh, uh, sorry. 
I stand here today and share my story, one that I have been waiting to tell for all too long, one that has burned into the heart of, 14 year, of my 14-year-old self. I was a child when I let you into my mom's house. I was a child when you told me to, take, to make an almost 30-minute drive with three other children in the car to your house. I was a child when you broke all my trust, my hopes, and my dreams. When, even after my parents were found, my siblings and I were ripped from the only known homes we knew, that of my parents. We were put with your parents and then moved to a family friend's home, neither of which were stable. This led to a worsening decline in my mental health. I was diagnosed with anxiety, depression, and PTSD. I was put on antidepressants, but it didn't help my constant PTSD episodes and sleepless nights. I, it felt as if everything around me was a trigger. I couldn't even go to school without having an episode of some kind most days. This continued until I was reunited with my mom in 2017, in December of 2017. The only thing, or, sorry, only then did my long journey of healing begin. But even as I healed, the trial moved over me. While I was anxious for the end and the closure I needed, I knew I had to face you one more time. And finally, that day came. I was ready as I was as ready as I would ever be. The day, the day came for me to sit in front of the jury. However, I found out last minute that I would be questioned by the man I feared the most. To sit there and be questioned by you tortured me. All I could feel was my body shaking and my heart pounding. I felt as if I couldn't breathe as you questioned me. Even after testifying, the mental anguish lingered. But the hard part was over and the weight off my shoulders. Now I stand here today, stronger than I was before, ready to start, ready for this sickening chapter to end. After years of continuances and waiting for closure, I am ready. Ready for the end and for the peace of mind. I may no longer be a child, but I can allow my inner child to heal. To heal from the damage her father had caused. I still have resentment, but it is no longer towards myself. Only towards the man I thought was my father, Trevor Summers. Any questions? Just repeat it. And oh, I, I want to pause for your commentary and she literally this is the exact statement that i have i'm holding right now mm -hmm. and that was heartbreaking for her to write and to have to read can you imagine I mean, she's talking about her father yeah she's talking about her father and she was incredibly powerful i mean to, were you here for this? I, th I thought you missed this part. I thought you were there for the motion part. So I was there mostly for motion part. I missed this, but I got it. Like I said, right. yes, uh, or on Monday, they gave me the papers, copies of the statements. And then when oh. I finally got the video, it just came together in uh. such a powerful way. And I was actually asking on an ethical level, like, is it appropriate to play her statements? Because she is an adult now. She is an adult when she gave the statement, but it was so powerful that I, I felt there's no way to tell the story without letting her say yeah. in her own words. Yeah. So that's that's why I decided to play her statement well she's 20 that that, that makes sense i right, just powerful all right mm -hmm. I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and play is there another older one no i i think she's the eldest um let's see and then at least yeah, I'm sure she her great. own statement yeah which is Sorry, I wish I had. I am not the same woman as I was in March 2017. I was weak. I would fall apart. I couldn't sleep. And if I did, I would start awake at 3 a.m. in a complete panic that you were attacking me again. I wanted to roll in a ball and give up. The amount of destruction that was left in the wake of your crimes was overwhelming, but I couldn't give up. I had five traumatized children that needed me to be the strong one. Let me start there. My eldest children had severe parental alienation caused by you. 
It took years of hard work and dedication to rebuild those relationships. Oh, how I cried at the pain that you caused them, the guilt in Arden, the hatred and anger in Landon. But I am happy to report that my love for them overcame your evil intent. All five children have love and stability being raised by me and a real man who protects his family from monsters like you. In 2017, I was triggered by bald men, men in black t-shirts, and men in general. But now, I was able to sit in front of an all-male jury, knowing that real men would never tolerate you. You used religion to get what you wanted. You tried to pervert God's word and shake my faith. While Psalms 118.17 says, I will not die, I will live, and I will proclaim what the Lord has done. God has given me the strength to stand strong against you. I am blessed beyond measure now in 2022, although I did not feel that way in 2017. You see, in 2017, when I was found, you owed over $100,000 to the IRS. Your bank accounts were overdrawn. You were being evicted from Newberry Grove Loop, and your car was returned to Enterprise where you rented it from. I was left a penniless single mom of five, surrounded by your lies and chaos. I had to make the choice to either roll over and give up or continue fighting against the destruction you caused. I now have a successful career, and I can provide for my family without anything from you. You have never shown remorse for any of your crimes. You have impacted so many in a truly negative, evil way, leaving victims in several states across the country. But you didn't want that discussed during the trial. You were the one opening the door to the fact that your lies finally caught up with you, and you already had federal charges with pending sentencing when you kidnapped me. Yet you continue to lie and manipulate by trying to get a mistrial if it was discussed, painting an even worse picture of you. You get absolutely zero credit of mine or the children's happiness. The credit goes to my husband, Jeff. He has sacrificed to put us first. He has been there picking up the pieces of brokenness that you treated as trash. And I want to say, Mr. Matthews, we are worth so much more. Mr. Matthewson is the most demure, like, just chill dude you could ever meet in your life. I, such a nice guy. I, I, uh, you'd, ha you'd have to be to, to deal with this. And she, she's awesome, but, like, look at the situation. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and, you know, obviously Arden did it very eloquently dealing with that sort of situation but jeff is such a cool dude a nice guy i i'm so glad that she's found some degree yeah. of happiness yeah uh i don't know i i you, you talked to her with me but i talked to her a couple of times uh she seems very well adjusted oh absolutely absolutely which is amazing under the circumstances, but that's really the sense you get. It doesn't feel like a like a fake. It's just that's the way she is. No, not at all. I agree with you entirely. And we will continue to do great things with our lives. You, on the other hand, will not. You will rot away for what you have done, and you don't deserve any more of my time or energy. Instead, I will use this time to thank Hillsborough County Sheriff's Department and Randall Crosby, as well as others, for saving my life. Jennifer Johnson, Jessica O'Connor, Judge Sabella, and the gentlemen of the jury for their hard work and dedication in seeking justice. Thank you. I'd like to thank Riverstone Church, their pastor, Matt and Katie, their deacons, their congregation, for the love and support during the most difficult time of my life. The spring of Tampa Bay for being by my side from the beginning, believing me before the kidnapping, advocating and guiding me, bringing awareness and healing to those who suffer from domestic violence. You all are warriors. To my friends, 
supporters, and survivor sisters everywhere. Thank you for inspiring me to be the best version of myself. May I go on and help others with strength and hope of healing. My parents, my brother, and the rest of my family, words can never express my thanks and love for you all. You carried me when I couldn't stand. You gave me strength and provided the tools for me to carry on. I still hear Poppy whisper, I love you, sweetheart. My five children, you are my world. You are so very special to me, and I am extremely proud to be your mom. Arden, you are brave. Landon, you are courageous. Brynn, you are determined. Grady, you are confident. And Cooper, you are bold. I look forward to a lifetime of memories and special moments we will continue to share in all of the love between us. And finally, Jeff Matthewson, the love of my life, thank you. I get to spend the rest of my life growing old with you, feeling loved and protected. Raising our children, celebrating their milestones, watching them grow, may we continue to build an incredible life together. I am thankful every day for having a second chance at life. I am now free, and I am asking for the maximum possible sentence for peace of mind for myself and my family. So, um, I don't know if you, do you want me to jump to the sentencing? Wow, I'm just getting, I'm getting over that. It's powerful. She, she was absolutely incredible. I, I dealt with the three kids and their statements. I got back in. Shortly after, or shortly at the end of this and I had a tear. All right, all right. Wow, that was that was more than. I, I mean, that was heavy. That was heavier than I thought it was going to be on the statement end. It it was extremely extremely powerful. I, 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 as I said, I got there at this, I got back to the courthouse so I had the statement and I had it here. Yep. Yep. All right. I, I, hey, did it move right into sentencing here or do you have to go, for, go to it? So, um, he's going to speak in his own defense very briefly. Mm -hmm. If you want to play it, we can, otherwise we can go to the sentencing. I say go sentencing. All right. Let's see. I'm tired of his rambling. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Um, based upon the victim's wishes. Uh, yes. Um, all the, excuse me, all of the victim impact statements were requesting the maximum. And let's see if I can come to there. I believe. I believe that's the ballpark, but give me a second. Just for uh, the attorney. Now, because they, they had a. They had a. Okay. That's probably at the. At the low end of the guidelines. And I asked if there's also. This is the argument of the defense attorney. Because it was unsophisticated. But we don't necessarily uh, need it that. It exceeds the statutory maximum. Technically, All right. So, from a from a technical perspective, the issue was that he was actually scored higher than the statutory maximum on some of the charges. And the question is, which applies? Is it the scoring system or is it statutory? And that's what they were going back and forth about. Just so everyone knows, in Florida, you have a score sheet. And you basically tick the boxes and the score sheet says what's supposed to apply. However, at the same time, certain statutes say the maximum is say 10 years or 15 years or whatever the hell it is. Which one is the one that applies? And the Florida Supreme Court, it's, there is an aspect that is kind of stupid and the defense attorney made it well for instance, the idea of 
attempted aggravated battery. How do you attempt a battery? Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't actually make sense. And the defense attorney made the argument well, but we're sort of in that ballpark, but the judge ultimately decided to go with the judge. Mm -hmm. Or excuse me, the judge ultimately decided to go with the Supreme Court of the state of Florida and just impose sentence based upon the score sheet. Okay. Well, I believe that. I'm, I'm, I'm with you there. I'm not. I'm not contesting the jury's verdict. I'm not contesting the evidence. I'm not contesting what the victim is saying. All right. All right let me just, for the record, um, pursuant to the discussion that we had at the bench, you are objecting to anything as to counts four through ten, which are the felonies uh that exceeds the statutory maximum being 15 years as to counts four and five and five years as to count six through ten is that correct yes that's correct i do not believe the court can sentence him to more than the maximum for the statutory crime five years of third degree felony 15 years of second degree felony cumulatively you could add it all up and then on the first degree attempted murder charges he could get these 32 years or he could get life on the attempted murder charge but i do not believe you could send that down to a 15 year or five year sentence i don't know what that rule is i don't even agree with it How you i was sitting by the way two seats back larger right. than the maximum sentence mm -hmm. the statute requires mind boggling all right i understand miss johnson anything else for the state judge i respectfully disagree with mr marchese and his sure saying that Trevor Summers is not a violent person. Um, William's rule evidence was admitted into this case and although he has not been tried um, or found guilty, um, there was an incident that had occurred, um, facts that were before you, of an incident that had occurred on February 18th and there was an injunction in place and he ignored that injunction, that court order and he convinced his children to let him sneak into his estranged wife's home and tie her up, put a pillow over her, and attempt to kill her and try and suffocate her. And then tied her up and drove her around Hillsborough County and further south for days, and then tried to kill her again when he knew that there was going to be no way out and he was not going to let anybody else have his wife he was either she was either going to have to agree to stay with him or he was going to kill her and there is a you can call it a murder suicide letter you can call it whatever you want but that's what the state would submit to you that letter was he intended to kill her in that car and he was going to kill himself he is a very violent person. He is not someone that should ever be able to be allowed to walk free again. And the state is asking that you punish him and sentence him that is consistent with the crimes he committed. And we're asking for the maximum as to each and every count. All right, thank you, Mr. Let me first say, well, first, uh, let me ask. I like um, the joke. Uh, oh, uh, Mr. Marquez, you're having a discussion regarding the uh, credit for time served. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, you have was, a number? I have a number of 2,031 days. Now the time served credit. Uh, not, do you have any reason who to cares? With that? Yeah, it's not going to matter here. I actually really like the way the judge First, let me say this. handled this. I respect the findings of the jury in this case, as I do in all cases. Second, let me say that this is a particularly sad case because of the circumstances. The circumstances involving family, the circumstances involving young children, who have suffered greatly as a result of these crimes, a particularly sad case. Mr. Summers, 
I cannot and will not hold against you your decision to represent yourself. However, I do believe that the timing of your decision was born of pure evil, which is not surprising that the circumstances of this Ooh. case I mean, I agree. The evidence that I heard clearly make you a monster in every stretch of the imagination. And as a result, first, I apologize to the victims for not being able to undo the harm, the pain that this defendant has caused you. I told you, you'd like to enjoy it, but not enjoy You should not feel guilty for anything that you did in this case. I assure you of that. I only hope that the sentence that I give today gives some sense of peace in knowing that Mr. Trevor Summers will spend the rest of his life in Florida State Prison as two counts one, two, and three, I sentence him to life in prison to run concurrent with each other. As two counts four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, I sentence him to 32.1125 years on each and every one of those counts to run consecutively I will impose all standard court costs, fees, and fines. As to count 11, I do apologize. I will sentence him to time served on the misdemeanor. I will give him credit as to all counts of 2,031 days. Yeah, we'll congratulations. Days You've got five years off of 200 and <laughs> some odd years. <laughs> You're still dying in jail. Mm -hmm. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten will be consecutive to each other and consecutive to the three life sentences. <clears throat> Again, I By the way, good for the judge. Mm -hmm. And that concludes this case. However, there is a case pending in front of Judge. This is where Tucson, yeah. which I don't know if we have a current date. If not, we need to give a date, and that is case number seventeen three nine six two. Madam Clerk, do you show a future date? Judge, if I may. Yes. Judge, at this time in twenty seventeen CF three nine six two, the state would be announcing an all process so that he can be transferred to Florida State Prison. All right. The state is announced an all process on seventeen three nine six two. At this time, we're just going to send you straight to prison. So there is nothing standing in the way of you. his transfer to Florida State Prison to begin his life sentence. Again, I thank you all very much. Wow. Yep. I wasn't Mr. getting what I said. It. The amended sworn sheet that I signed. Um, those are normally transmitted now to Jaws. It's entirely up to you. If you want to do it that way, I'll sign it on the Yeah, of the Thank you. All right. On, on a fun side note. And I'll, I'm going to pause one second because Secret has a question. Um, no, what she did was she null crossed. There was another case pending, which would have kept him in county jail for a period of time. And she basically said the state's just not going to prosecute that other case, send him to prison for the rest of his life. Yep. What I want to know is that that was wild. First of all, the sentencing didn't take as long as I th thought it was going to. He no. he got to the point once it was once it was to him. And I did not ex I did not expect the the judge to drop the pure evil line on him, which was which was deserved and cool. But I just like oh I didn't see that coming. The judge was absolutely I think floored. Yeah. On the entire case from the beginning. Yeah. But it's a wild one. A cool, straightforward judge knew what he was doing. And you know what? I, I was kind of surprised at the approbation, but 
you know, I, I think it's appropriate in the circumstance. All right. I want to see the bit of the clip where where you get in. Do you have that? Yeah. I was watching on uh, – I, I get this clip. I see it because John and I have been going back. We had already done a video on it because he was in the courtroom, and, and we we talked about the sentence and everything. I see that uh, Law and Crime put up their, their version of it. I'm checking it to see what's going on. I throw it on there towards the end, and I hear John. <laughs> Uh, it's minor, but it's just it was just funny. It tickled me. It tickled me. Do you know when they're gonna post it up? Um Alyssa, I do not personally know. Oh hang on, hang on. It's a little bit back from there. Alright, it's about there. Alyssa, I do not personally know the judge. I might have had some papers in front of him. Yeah, oh, I'll be in a couple of weeks, maybe a minute or so. Are you posting this anywhere? Is there some way I can yeah, request a copy of the tape to me? You're on Law and Crime? They, it's, uh, they weren't live streaming it. Do you know when they're going to post it up? <laughs> it's a try. It worked. That just cracked me up because I, when I... Work. When I saw it, I was on Law and Crime, and I'm like, wait a second. This <laughs> oh. What an interesting case. It, it really, it, it's, honestly, from my perspective, it is a heartbreaking case because it's such a nice family. It's such good people. Obviously, at least as fantastic obviously the entire family is i had the opportunity to meet them i mean they're such good people to have such a harrowing experience visited upon them yeah i i it was just wild. This this case was sent to me because, because when he cross examined her, um, a few a bunch of people sent it to me and they said they were interested. And I'm like, I don't know anything about. It. I was like, fine, I'll do it because I started watching it and I'm like, that's that's crazy. So I did a video, and then right when I get done, they're like, the, the case is live. So then I just flipped on to to live streaming what the proceedings from there. You must have gotten in the chat. We start talking afterwards, and you're like, you know, <laughs> I live right next to. It. I'm like. Go go over there tomorrow. It, it's so weird, and then you meet people. It's 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 one of the neat things oh, about YouTube. It, well, it, it's sort of interesting because it all started like my whole kind of you know law tube experience started with a uh, Kyle Rittenhouse, and we were doing the you know uh, what was it? It was basically the objection. Kind of, mm. you know, uh, what the hell was it like, for lack of a better term, family feud um, with mm -hmm. Nate? And I was on there with Kurt, and you know, it was fun. It was cool. It was a nice time. I spent some time with Joe. Joe went to the same law school, and I got invited into the freaking DM group. And the next thing you know, we got in touch, and it's been fun ever since. Like, the whole yeah. point is we're trying to – law is not a fun business. And no. I want everyone to no, genuinely know that. <laughs> I, I, I say it to everyone. The reason people hate lawyers is the day that you need a lawyer is probably one of the worst days of your life. Yep. So, yeah, and I, I'm, I don't even remember when I met you. It was during um, uh, Depp Heard. It was probably, it was either on Kurt's stream or a Ricada stream. Sure. And I'm like, oh, I don't hey. think I've ever actually been on Ricada stream. So it was probably one of Kurt's. It was probably, probably on Kurt's stream then, yeah. But yeah, no, I like, I think the law is never particularly fun. 
But when you can have a way to make it fun, at least for a little bit and teach some people, like that's, I prefer teaching people than actually practicing to be totally honest with you. Yeah. That, well, I just want to say I'm proud of you. You got this done. I've been hounding you incessantly. You guys, you guys went behind the scenes. I, I gave him a, I gave him a serious talking to. I'm shirtless, and I'm like, dude, do you know what you're doing? And he's like, uh, I'm like, get it on now, get it on now. And I made him like go around and practice all this stuff. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> Yeah, I'm really about that. Scene. And then John's like, yeah, dude, could you put a shirt on? <laughs> That's a true story. I'm like, all right, all right, I'll put a shirt on. <laughs> that is a true story. I can't you can't make that one up. <laughs> it really happened. It really happened about a half hour ago. It really did. All right. All right. That is a major success. Thank you, everybody, for coming out. Thank you, Secret Mix Squirrel, who's always there and supportive. Uh, Mike, I, I believe this is my stream, not yours. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so I would like to thank everybody that came around. Please like and subscribe. I would love to see you back again and keep doing these sorts of conversations. I appreciate Mike coming on, and uh, I think he probably drove a lot of you here. So I appreciate that. And then I will let Mike take it away. Well, there we go. Now you've got a channel. It's happening. You've learned it. It's cool. Thank you, John. Thanks. And thanks for coming on my channel so much and helping me out and doing this and showing up live. I'm glad your first video was about this because you had a live experience with it and we just did so much on it. It's just very, it's a very cool first video for your channel. Hey, it's it's always my pleasure, and this will be posted, and I'm looking forward to doing more of it. All right, cool. All right, take care, Mike. All right, bye. Bye.